This puppy I like to call a ghost chipper. Hollow laser technology sucks in the ghost and neutralizes it. Step up to bat and do what you're gonna do. You truly scare me. I just wanna let you know that. I'm gonna just... It's like Mardi Gras in there. How did you first get involved? Uh, Ivan Reitman called me uh, when I was still working on Spy, and uh, they had a sequel script that they wanted to get done, and um, I was so flattered, but at the same time, when I read the script, I, I couldn't quite figure my way into it, uh, and so kind of hemmed and hawed a bit, and then Amy Pascal from Sony called me up and, and was just saying, like, such a big franchise and just sitting there and it really stuck with me. I was like, I should, it would be fun to bring this back. But I thought, how would I do it? And I thought, well, if I can do it with the funny women that I work with all the time, that would be great. And then if I could reboot it and make it an origin story, then it'd be fun to just kind of start the, you know, start the whole folklore about it over, over again. And uh, here we are. I mean, obviously, it's been in development for a hell of a long time, and there's a lot to sift through. Yeah. Were you just very keen to kind of scrap all of that and start again? Yeah, I was. I, I find that in my career, things that take a long time and don't and take a while, long time to gel, usually there's something about it that's the, off or the energy's wrong. And, and I'm a big fan of like a runaway freight train. So you go like, here's the idea, we got it, let's go and we'll write it and let's let blast through. And I find that even if there's shortcomings, the little shortcomings it has because of that, the energy and the enthusiasm of everybody involved kind of keeps it buoyant. And when it came to obviously using the funny women you work with. Obviously you worked with Melissa and Kristen plenty before. Yeah. Were they always in mind all the time? Um, when we wrote it, we kind of tried to not fixate on, on any one person just because we wanted to make sure we were creating four very original characters. But that said, people in, are in your brains. And at one point, you know, we really thought that Melissa was actually going to play the role that Leslie played. But then I was kind of like, well, I, Melissa's played that sort of headstrong person before. And I thought, let's make her the defiant nerd, because that's kind of a more fun thing for her to do. So, but it, it was, you, you kind of piece it together as you go, and then you find the, the right people. And um, as for the boys, Chris Hemsworth, Andy Garcia, how was mm -hmm. it putting them together? It's fun. I mean, Chris and I have the same agent. You know, we wrote the role for this this receptionist, kind of incompetent receptionist. It was like, okay, we'll get a comedy guy. Who should we get? And then my agent said, well, Chris is actually interested in doing something in the movie. And it was like, oh, if we could get Thor to be their receptionist, what could be better than that? And he came on board and, and just embraced it in such a way. And then Andy Garcia is a friend of mine too. And uh, I just, you know, when you think the mayor of New York, who could it possibly be? Who are you going to call? You got to call Andy Garcia. Uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, conductors in the metaphysical. Okay, cool. See ya. Hey guys, which one of these makes me look more like a doctor? Who was on the phone? Uh, the Stonebrook Theater. There's a goat on the loose. I'm gonna load up the car. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Yo. Yo, I got it. Look at that beauty! <laughs> what did you do to my uncle's hearse? I fixed it. Man, this is so inappropriate for this vehicle. Oh, we have fun. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Obviously, it's a movie with a big old budget. I mean, far bigger than anything you've done before. How did you find all that? I mean, it's daunting, but at the same time, what you have to do is you have to force yourself to not think about it. I'm sure the <laughs> studio loves to hear me say that. But you know, the reason my movies, you know, I, I feel that my movies work is because there's just an intimacy when we're making it. We're just kind of get there and like, let's just have fun. Let's just try this stuff. And I think if I was ever going like, oh, you know, like this is so big, let's we have to be sober about it. I think some of that energy would go out of it. So you have to kind of not think about it, but then at the same time, you know, you have these resources. So when you're putting it together and writing it and conceiving, you go like, oh, let's go big here. But then the middle of it should just be small character based comedy. And how did you find working with all the kind of visual effects? Because obviously stuff on this scale must be fairly new to you. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, the, the great thing about special effects now versus back, you know, in the days of the original Star Wars and even the original Ghostbusters is you were, he would be very regimented and like, we got to shoot this from here because we're going to have a plate that goes here. But now because of computers and tracking software and all that, 
it really allows me to kind of shoot the way that I would shoot without special effects. We can still be loose and just kind of be in the moment and find the funny things because I know that they can drop those things in as long as I've got a green screen in the right place or sometimes even if I don't, as long as we know what we need out of the scene, you really have a lot of freedom. But I love it. I'm such a special effects nerd. I mean, it's my favorite thing. So I was a kid in the candy store with this one. Okay, power up! How was it coming up with all the idea for all the different ghosts? Because there's a lot of different ones. Yeah, it was, you know, it was kind of what the scene needed. You know, each scene kind of dictated what we needed. I, I very much wanted to make sure that a lot of our ghosts were humanoid because I wanted them to be played by actors because I didn't want my, my actors, my four Ghostbusters, having to act against tennis balls and something that's not there. And so I hired these amazing actors that I've worked with before uh, and put them in full costume and prosthetics. And, and But then we'd put these LED light suits on them so that there was light interaction with the actors and the environment. But then they could do a performance. And, you know, the, Gertrude Eldridge, the one who, who projects onto, onto Kristen the first time, you know, she was really there floating in front of them. And, like, she screamed at one point and scared the girls. And it was great because you get these real performances and you really feel like they're in, in with a real ghost. You also, the movie really gets around New York as well. I mean, how um, was it important to you that you see as much of the city as you, know, you can? Yeah, well, yeah, it was because, you know, the, the, the character, you know, New York City is as is, is much a character in the movie, the original movie, as are the Ghostbusters. And it felt like it would be really remiss not to kind of play into that. The irony is we actually shot most of the movie in Boston, but, uh, but we were able to send you know, a crew to kind of get driving shots of the Ecto and do that. And then we had one day where we shot in, in uh, New York in front of the firehouse, as you saw. And uh, it was fun, but I realized if we had shot the whole movie there, I don't think we would have gotten, gotten it finished because you know, Ghostbusters is so famous in New York that the set just got deluged the, the day we were there. So uh, it worked out well. <laughs> Obviously, you've got Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd making small appearances. Yeah. I mean, that must have been great to have on board. I mean, were you all, was yeah. that always going to be there or was that something you had to organize? Or Well, we, we had written those roles specifically for them, um, but you just never know are they going to show up, especially Bill, who's, you know, resisted doing a sequel to Ghostbusters for almost 30 years. Um, but, you know, they were so supportive of what we were doing and just really lovely about it. And when we asked, they said, sure, we'll do it and came on board. You know, but, but when they walk on the set, that's a really sobering moment because you're like, wow, the Ghostbusters are on the set of our Ghostbusters. So it was cool. And obviously respecting what's in the original movie must have been a, a huge concern the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You know, you want to... You want to be respectful to the original ones. And again, Katie and I are such fans of, of the original ones that we didn't want to do anything that would mess it up. But at the same time, we want to make it our own. So just felt like if we had a reverence towards that movie and did it our movie in a way that didn't pretend that one didn't exist, but actually had fun with, here's things you know from it, now we're going to show you a different take on it, then that to me seemed like the most kind of fun and respectful way to do it. And hopefully people will agree with us. Oh, hell no, the devil is a liar! Get out of my friend, ghost! Ow, that's gonna leave a mark! The power of pain compels you! And obviously there's plenty of life in it yet if, if you want to carry on with other films. Is that very much their hope that you'll get to do two and three? And, and... Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I always have always avoided sequels in my career, but this world is so big and this cast is so good that it, it would probably be remiss not to... Uh, unleash them on the world again and let them save some, or bust some more ghosts. And finally, what, what is next for you? What will you be moving on to after Vacation. This? Okay. A long vacation. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm so happy with what I get to do in my career, and I just want to keep working with funny, great women, and uh, there's a movie I'm writing right now that hopefully will be the next one, but, you know, sky's the limit. Kevin, can you answer the phone? I can't. It's in the fish tank. The one on the desk. Oh, that one. Uh, what's the place called again? Conductors of the Metaphysical Examination. Got it. Ghostbusters. You got a, uh... No, I'm tired. No, no, listen. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off. How about that? I, I don't really think that's a good idea. No. Going to take off. Don't 
upset the ghost. Really? 